All right, so you see that little update notification on your Chromebook, you hit restart, and then what happens? A lot of the time, it feels like nothing's really changed, right? But with Chrome OS 141, there are actually some super useful new features hiding just under the surface. So in this explainer, we're going to dig in and find out what's new and how you can actually use it. Okay, so you just updated. What actually changed? We're going to wake it all down into three main things. A much smarter battery to help your device last longer, a really nice convenience boost for your apps, and, of course, the super important security updates that are always working in the background to protect you. First up, let's talk about something every single one of us with a laptop cares about, battery life. But this isn't just about, you know, squeezing an extra 30 minutes out of your day. Nope. This is about preventing that awful feeling a year from now when you realize your battery just doesn't hold a charge anymore. I mean, we've all been there, haven't we? Your laptop used to be a champ, lasting all day, and now it can't even get through a single meeting without screaming for a charger. That's battery degradation in a nutshell. And Chrome OS 14.1 is finally tackling this head-on, giving you some real tools to fight back. So here's the key takeaway. This update puts you in the driver's seat when it comes to your Chromebook's charging habits. Instead of just plugging it in and, you know, hoping for the best, you can now actively manage how it charges to really maximize its lifespan. All right, so check this out. These are basically your two new superpowers for battery health, and you'll find them right on your power settings. On one hand, you've got charge limit. Think of this as the marathon mode for your battery. If you're someone who's pretty much always plugged in, this is for you. It puts a cap on the charge at 80%, which, believe it or not, puts way less stress on the battery's chemistry. It really cuts down on long-term wear and tear. Then, on the other hand, we have adaptive charging. This is for the rest of us. It's super clever, it actually learns your habits, like when you unplug every morning, and it times the charge to hit 100% right before you need it. Pretty smart, huh? Okay, so we've covered making your hardware last longer, but what about your day-to-day -day workflow? This next feature is a small one, but man, it's a mighty update that's designed to get rid of one of those tiny, repetitive annoyances we all deal with after a restart. You know the drill, right? You restart your Chromebook for an update, and then you have to go click, click, click to reopen your email, your chat app, your calendar. It's a small hassle, for sure, but it adds up. Well, with Chrome OS 141, your web apps, or PWAs as they're called, will now just pop right back up after a restart, exactly where you left them. It's such a simple change, but it makes the whole experience feel so much more seamless. And this isn't some obscure feature either. As one Redditor pointed out, this used to be an experimental option that you really had to dig around in the settings to find. But now, it's a standard feature for everybody. It's a perfect example of how feedback and testing from the community can lead to real improvements for all of us. All right, so we've talked about the features you can actually see and click on. Now, let's pop the hood and talk about the stuff you can't see but you absolutely rely on. Think of it like getting a tune-up for your car. You don't actually see the oil getting changed, but your engine is definitely a whole lot safer because of it. You know, it's easy to get excited about new buttons and settings, but every single update contains this huge bundle of security fixes. And this kind of preventative maintenance is honestly probably the most important part of any OS update. It's what protects you from threats you'll hopefully never even know existed. So just how seriously does Google take security? Well, this number should give you a pretty good idea. $50,000. That's how much Google paid out to independent security researchers just for finding and reporting the vulnerabilities that are fixed in this one single update. It really shows you the constant collaborative effort that goes into keeping your device safe. And here's a little peek at what those researchers found. Now, you don't need to know what a heat buffer overflow is, I promise. The main thing to get here is that these are high severity vulnerabilities in really core parts of the system, like the video player and the V8 JavaScript engine that basically powers the entire web. And now they've all been patched, making your browsing a whole lot safer. So while Google is busy handling the core security of the operating system, the apps you use are a huge part of your experience, right? But getting an app that was designed for a phone to work perfectly on a laptop, well, it's a lot more complicated than you might think. Let's take a quick look at this from the developer's side of things. Yeah, you really can't just drop a phone app onto a laptop and expect everything to be perfect. I mean, Chromebooks have keyboards, mice, trackpads, resizable windows, all things that many phone apps never, ever have to think about. Getting that experience to feel right takes a lot of deliberate work from the developers. Have you ever used an Android app on your Chromebook that just felt a little off? You know, maybe it didn't resize properly or you couldn't use your keyboard to type. Well, this slide pretty much shows you why. 
Developers have to go in and specifically tell their app, hey, it's okay if there's no touchscreen, or hey, don't expect to find a GPS signal. They have to manually add support for a mouse and keyboard. It's a ton of extra work, and it's exactly why some apps feel totally at home on Chrome OS, while others, well, they feel like they're just visiting. All right, let's zoom all the way out for our final points. It's so important to remember that a piece of software is never just a bunch of code. It's really a conversation, a constant back and forth between the company that makes it, the developers who build for it, and the community of people like you and me who use it every single day. And this is what that conversation actually looks like. These are real comments from real people using their Chromebooks out in the wild. And you can see the whole spectrum of the user experience right here, can't you? There's praise for the hardware, frustration with bugs and pre-release software, that ongoing challenge of getting all the apps to work perfectly, and even questions about the very features we just talked about, like battery maintenance. This is the raw feedback that truly shapes the future of Chrome OS. You know, that user who mentioned being in beta mode brings up a super interesting point. Not everybody is running the exact same version of Chrome OS. You actually get a choice about how cutting edge or how stable you want your device to be. And this is all done through something called channels. So here's the deal. It's a trade-off. Most of us, and for good reason, are on the stable channel. It's rock solid, fully tested. But if you're feeling a bit more adventurous, you can switch over to the beta channel for a sneak peek at what's coming next. Or if you're really brave, you can jump on the developer channel, which gets updated constantly with the very latest code, but can be, well, pretty risky. It's a really cool way for users to see the future and for Google to get that crucial early feedback. So there you have it. Chrome OS 141 is way more than just a new version number. It's about making your device last longer, saving you a little bit of time every single day, and of course, keeping you safe online. But the evolution never, ever stops. So that brings us to the final question. What about you? What's the one feature you are really hoping to see in the next update? Mm -hmm.